Hello students and welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Shafali Nagpal, Associate Professor at Human Resource Development Center, Bhagat Phool Singh Mahila Vishwadhyale, Sonipat. We are studying the paper Managing Culture and Diversity. Today we will study the module Human Resource Development in a Culturally Diverse Environment. On the completion of this module, you would be able to understand the concept of HRD in a diverse environment. Also understand the nature and the scope of human resource development in the diverse environment. Let us begin. In the competitive business environment of this 21st century, managing manpower is the greatest challenge. In order to remain in competition, business organizations are hiring the best professionals around the world and giving their best to the society. Therefore, globalization has no doubt made it easy to get the best quality of products and services at the doorstep, but also it has brought the challenge of managing the people of different cultures together. More and more employees are being sent overseas for the different assignments of the organizations and such employees becomes expatriates and the series of adjustments wait for them when such thing happens. On other hand, organization should also learn how to survive and flourish in various countries with diverse cultures and multifarious backgrounds. Here, the role of HR and then the HRD becomes very significant. HRD basically works on three key areas that is individual development, career development and organizational development. Managing people in the international settings and adjustment require human resource to compel a wider range of functional areas. Different human resource system should be established for the employees from the different geographic locations. They must also have the knowledge of the external countries environment including the foreign government, political group, religious groups and so many. Other issues like compensation, safety, health, welfare, personal life etc. They are also be taken care of. Employees from the foreign countries are valuable and most costly human asset of an organization and therefore it is necessary to manage them systematically and strategically so that they can easily adapt, survive and flourish in the diverse cultures and environments. Students, let us understand the few definitions of human resource development. According to Pulpa Subha Rao, HRD is a process in which the employees of an organization are helped or motivated to acquire and develop technical, managerial and behavioral knowledge, skills and abilities and mold the values, beliefs and attitude necessary to perform present and future roles by realizing the highest human potential with a view to contribute positively to the organizational, group, individual and social goals. According to Professor T. V. Rao, HRD is a process by which the employees of an organization are helped in a continuous and planned way. First, to acquire and sharpen the capabilities required to perform various functions associated with their present and expected future roles. Second, to develop their general capabilities as individual and discover and exploit their own potential for their own or organizational development purpose. Third, to develop an organization culture in which superior subordinate relationship teamwork and collaboration among subunits are strong and contribute to the professional well-being, motivation and pride of employees. Now let us understand the nature and scope of HRD. First, it is systematic and planned approach. It is a systematic and the planned approach for the development of the culturally diversified workforce in order to achieve the organizational, group and individual goals. Second, it is a continuous process. For the culturally diverse workforce, HRD is a continuous process for the development of technical, managerial, behavioral and conceptual skills and knowledge. Third, it is multi-level. HRD develops the skills and knowledge not only at the individual level but also at the didactic level, group level and organizational level. It is multidisciplinary. HRD is multidisciplinary 
as it draws its input from the engineering technology, psychology, anthropology, management, commerce, medicines, etcetera. Fifth, various techniques. It demands various techniques like performance appraisal, training and development, career planning, counseling, social and religious program, quality circles, etcetera. It is omnipresent. The presence of HRD is seen not only in the manufacturing and service industry, but also in the information technology industry. Let us now understand what is the scope of human resource development here. The HRD deals with the development of the human resources in order to achieve the individual, group and organizational goals and helps in efficient management of the employees in the organization. The scope of HRD in relation to culturally diverse workforce is as under. Now let us see the scope of HRD. First, recruiting the employees within the dimension and possibilities for developing the diverse workforce. Second, selecting the talented employees from across the globe having potentials for development to meet the present and future organizational goals. Third, Analyzing and appraising and developing performance of culturally diverse employees as individual, member of group and organization with a view to develop them by identifying the gaps in the skills and knowledge. Fourth, help the employees to learn from their superiors through the performance consultation, performance counseling and performance interviews. Fifth, to train the employees in acquiring the new technical skills and knowledge develop the employees in managerial and behavioral skill and knowledge. Seventh, planning for the career and introducing developmental programs. Eighth, succession planning for the employees. Ninth, changing the behavior of culturally diverse employees through organizational development. Next, employees learning through group dynamics, intra and inter team interaction. Next is, learning through the social and religious interaction and programs for the employees from different cultures. Factors for an organization to select people from different cultures. To survive and prosper in an increasingly heterogeneous society, organization should capitalize on the employee's diversity as a source of competitive advantage. The main factors that force an organization to select people from different cultures, rather different countries are as follows. Factors of an organization to select people from the different cultures. The factors are lack of talented people. Many a times an organization needs such people who have expert knowledge in the related field. If such people are not available within the country, there is a need to recruit the expert from outside the country. Second. Position filling. To take the service of the person who are not available locally, there is a need to recruit the expert from outside. Third, management development. To develop employees perspective by having them work out of the different locations from their home location or drive corporate values in subsidiary by having parent countries nationals for the some time. Another is organizational development. Employees may be transferred for a variety of strategic reasons such as to gain increased control, knowledge transfer, development of policies and procedures, etc. Need for HRD It is more essential not only due to the above mentioned factors, but it is also needed under the globalization and in the fast technological changing environment. The following points lays the important need of the HRD for the MNCs where there is a large number of culturally diverse employees. Need for HRD Change in job requirements is one. Organizational dynamism brings changes in the organizational design and job design. Due to the change in the job design, there is a change in the job description and job specifications. These demand changes in the HRD too. Next is need for multi-skilled human resource. The changing trends in industrialization, structuring jobs and organization demand the employee to take up multiple activities. The customer centered approach lead to de-jobbing, flexible organization and flexible work. All these changes demand the employees with the multiple skills. HRD activities provide 
the opportunity to the employees to acquire and develop multiple skills. Third is environmental changes. Organization viability is continuously influenced by the environmental threats. If the organization does not adapt itself to the environmental changes, it may lose its market share. Therefore, organization needs to develop its workforce for the changing environment. Fourth is technological advances. In order to survive and develop in the fast moving competitive and technocrat world, it is essential for an organization to adapt latest technology. Adaptation of the latest technology is not possible unless and until employees accept such changes. In order to make culturally diverse workforce used to technology, HRD becomes inevitable. Fifth is organizational complexity. With the emergence of the increased mechanization and automation, manufacturing of multiple product and rendering of services, multicultural workforce organization become complex. Here HRD plays an important role. Next is human relations. Most of the organizations tend to adopt the human relations approach. This is in turn needs HRD. Seventh is change in economic policies. Almost all government across the globe have changed their economic policies for the communist to capitalist economy, etc. Even in India after 1991, new economic reforms have been introduced. Liberalization, privatization and globalization posed threat to the weak firms and created opportunities for the large firms. Therefore, the changes in the economic policies and for their successful implementation it needs the development of the human resource. Objectives of HRD First is to prepare the employee to meet the current and the future job requirements. Second is to prevent employee obsolescence and develop creative abilities and talents. Third is to impart new entrants with the basic HRD skills and knowledge. Fourth is to aid total quality management. Fifth is to promote individual and collective morale, a sense of responsibility, cooperative attitudes and good relationships. Next is to help people or employees from the different cultures adjust in the current working environment. Next is to ensure smooth and efficient working in the organization. Next is to create such a climate that enables expatriate to discover, develop and use his or her capabilities to the fuller extent in order to further both individual and organizational goals. Dimensions of HRD in diverse environment Before understanding the various dimensions of HRD related to the diverse workforce, it is necessary to understand the basic concept of diversity. The basic concept related to the diverse workplace in the business organizations are highly diversified with the employees of different countries, different age groups, religions, races, ethnic group, color and gender. The basic understanding of the diversified workforce can be understood through the concept of dimensions of human resource development in a diverse environment. First is anthocentric. In ethnocentricity, it is a belief in the superiority of one's own ethnic group. The firm basically believes that the parent country nationals are better qualified and trustworthy than host country nationals. Another approach is polycentric. Polycentrism is a belief that the local people know the local environment better than outsiders. Third is geocentric. Geocentricism is a nation that the best people should be employed regardless of their nationality. Fourth is regiocentric. Regiocentricity is the variation of staffing policy to suit particular geographic area. Dimensions of the human resource development in diverse environment. Research studies shows that high rate of expatriate falls due to the cultural shock. According to Harris and Morin, the cultural differences between the countries should be examined from the different given dimensions. The following dimensions shows the functions of the HRD manager as it makes very essential for the employees from the 
outside. Dimensions of HRD in a diverse environment Creating a welcome environment, HRD must try to create the soothing environment when the first time the foreign employee visit the organization. He can assist such employees by giving a warm welcome that can be done by either using certain signs of his languages or images that would make him feel comfortable, proving information in his language etc. Another is sense of self and space. It matters a lot for an expatriate that how much personal space is given to him. Generally in India, people generally prefer to work in group and avoid individualistic approach. It is not the case in the western countries. HRD should take care of this function that the individual has his own space. Another is language. Foreign language and skills are the gateway to the cross culture understanding. Words and gestures means different things to different people. For example, Ford introduced a low cost truck, Fiera, in some Spanish speaking countries. Unfortunately, the name meant ugly women in Spanish. As a result, low sales were there. Therefore, HRD should take into consideration the dimensions of the language. Next is dress and appearances. Garments and body decorations vary by culture. Formal dress by the business meeting may be essential in some countries and not in others. HRD should guide the employees in this respect as what they expect to wear according to the organizational culture. Another is the food and the eating habits. Different cultures have different ways of eating and preparing food. In India, two times fresh prepared meals are preferred whereas in the US, the dominance of the stored and frozen food is there. According to the taste of the expatriate, but the tradition of the organization should be followed in the organization. Next is time and time awareness. Time zone and time awareness varies from place to place. Here, the HRD functions become vital in making an expatriate use the current working conditions and adjust accordingly. Next is belief and attitudes. There is a lot of difference in belief and attitudes of the people from different countries. In India, there is a belief that the new startup should be done in a good mahurat, that means good time, whereas in the other countries, a new startup is dependent upon the availability of the time and the people. In every organization, an individual belief and culture should be taken care. Matrix of HRD in culturally diverse environment. Under the normal circumstances, HRD matrix includes instrument, processes, outcomes and effectiveness. Each one has been explained in short below. Matrix of the HRD in a culturally diverse environment. One is instruments of HRD. The instruments included in the HRD depend upon the various factors like the organizational size, support from the top management, internal environment, etc. Generally, these instruments include performance appraisal system, counseling, role analysis, potential development of an employee, training, job rotation, job enrichment, etc. HRD process. Due to the instruments of HRD, the next stage is the generation of processes. It includes various processes like role clarity, performance planning, risk taking, dynamism of employees, etc. Such processes should result in more competent, satisfied and committed people that would make the organization grow by contributing their best to it. Next is the HRD outcomes. Due to the efforts of the HRD instruments and processes, people become more committed, satisfied and dedicated. They try to give their best performance to the organization. Organizational effectiveness. The HRD outcomes influences the organizational effectiveness, which in turn depends upon the number of the variables like environment, technology, competitors, markets, etc. Linkages between the HRD instrument, process, outcome and organizational effectiveness. HRD department, performance appraisal, review, discussion, feedback, counseling, role analysis, potential development, exercise, training, communication policies, job rotation, enrichment, rewards, etc. are the instruments. In the processes, role clarity, 
planning of development by every employee, awareness of competencies required for the job performance, proactive orientation, trust, collaboration and teamwork, authenticity, openness, risk taking, value generation, clarification of norms and standards are included. In the outcomes, more competent people, better developed roles, higher work commitments and job involvement, more problem solving, better utilization of human resources, higher job satisfaction and work motivation, better organizational health and teamwork etc. are included. In the organizational effectiveness, higher productivity, growth and diversification, cost reduction, more profits, better image. Now let us understand the mechanism of HRD. Its mechanism depends upon the organization. Generally, an organization uses the mechanism which develop the competencies of an employee and improve the overall organizational climate, especially for an expatriate. The basic components of such mechanism are as under. The various components as you can see in this diagram, one is a performance appraisal, potential appraisal, career planning, training and employee development, organizational development, reward, employee welfare and quality of work life. What are the components of the HRD mechanism? First is performance appraisal. In order to manage and improve the performance of an employee, taking accurate decision regarding the staff and to improve the overall productivity of an organization, the performance appraisal system is widely being used. The main aim of performance appraisal is to provide the exact and correct picture of the employee's performance. To meet this performance, Targets are set. These targets are based upon the job criteria and best determines the job performance. Using the various techniques of performance appraisal, the expert compare the actual performance with the set standards. Appraisal help an organization to communicate its expectations regarding performance and connection between the performance and the reward of an employee. They increase the employee confidence when an employee receives the feedback that their efforts are being systematically rewarded, it includes the negative feedback also along with the positive remarks. A rater should use the HRD oriented appraisals as a mechanism to uncover the difficulties faced by the subordinate while handling the assigned task and try to remove these hurdles. Understand the strength and weaknesses of the subordinate. Next is to encourage the subordinate to meet the problems head on, accept responsibility and face challenges with confidence and courage. Plan for effective utilization of talents of the subordinates. The second component of the mechanism is potential appraisal. Potential means an ability that an employee possesses, but due to some reason or the other it is not being used currently. Performance means the skills, abilities in the meeting of the requirement of the job which one is holding currently. The objective of the potential appraisal is to identify the potential of an employee to occupy the higher positions in the organization and thereby undertake the higher responsibilities. A good appraisal system helps the management to pick up the suitable candidates for a given job and other additional training if necessary. HRD carries out such appraisal based on as you can see in this diagram there is supervisor's observation, performance data relating to the various roles played by an employee, performance on roles in stimulated setting relating to a new position. Components of the HRD mechanism third include career planning. A career is a sequence of positions held by a person in the course of a lifetime. Career planning is the process of integrating the employee's need and aspirations with the organizational need. In relation to an expatriate, long term growth plan of the firm is made known to him. Major changes are discussed at all level to promote understanding and commitment among the culturally diverse workforce. Career planning does not ensure 100 percent success, but at least Employees are prepared to encash the opportunities that come in the way. This in turn benefits both employees as well as the organization. Fourth is training and the employee development. 
Training is a learning experience designed to achieve a relatively permanent change in the individual that will improve the ability to perform on the job. Employee development on the other hand is a future oriented training process focusing on the personal growth of an employee. Generally, for the managing the diversity in an organization, HRD should also give the training related to the following dimensions other than the job. Cultural briefing that indicates the tradition, custom, living conditions, health stipulations, etc. Assignment briefing that indicates the length of the assignment, tax implications, compensations, etc. Cross cultural training that shows the difference in the culture, language, laws, society, etc. Effort should be made that an employee would not experience a cultural shock. Next is organizational development. Organization conditions keeps on changing continuously. Therefore, employee skills and abilities should be continuously upgraded in order to meet the changing needs of an organization. A systematic and planned way of managing this change is known as organizational development. The important components of the organization development are the change effort is planned and proactive. Second, changes are aimed either at the whole organization or any department or division. Third, effort is made from the top integrating various parts of the system. Fourth, the major focus is on increasing the capability of the long run effectiveness, developing the organizational self renewing capacity, including its ability to create new and innovative solution to its problem. Several interventions are used such as process consultation, team building, third party intervention, survey and feedback etc. Changes are brought about through a consultant or specialist. Next is rewards. These are the most lucrative things for which the people are working and even they become ready to move to totally different cultures just for the sake of getting rewards. Reward may be financial or the non-financial. Financial rewards include basic pay and all other types of compensation that an employee receives. Non-financial rewards include the feeling of achievement, recognition, etc. To an expatriate, financial rewards should be in accordance to the international level and an acute care should be taken while taking this decision. Seventh is employee welfare and quality of work life. Employee welfare means the effort to make life worth living for the workmen. It include various services, facilities, benefits offered to the employee by the employers, unions and the government. Quality of the work life efforts are systematic efforts made by the organization to give workers a great opportunity to affect the way they do their job and contribution they make to the organization overall effectiveness. QWL efforts include the following involvement of the employee in the organization and giving them the opportunities to participate in almost all the decisions of the organization. Second is the quality circles which means the small group of the employees who meet regularly to find, analyze and solve quality and other work related problems of the particular department or the section. Third is self management work teams. Fourth is suggestion programs, a formal method for generating, evaluating and implementing ideas. Another is open door policies. Let us now understand the outcomes of the HRD. The main outcome of the human resource development with reference to the managing cultural diversity are listed under. In real sense, they are actually the benefits of the HRD in an organization. HRD outcomes make the employees more competent through the development of the new skills, knowledge and attitudes. There is a greater clarity of the norms and standard. People become aware of the skills required for the job performance and the expectations which other members have set for them. Employees become more committed, develops a team spirit, risk taking ability and also proactive to the need of an organization. Another is environment of the trust and respect is created in the organization which helps the value building of an organization. Thirdly, there is a greater collaboration and teamwork that produces synergy. Employee become ready to accept the change and find themselves better equipped with the problem solving capabilities. Participation develops in the workers a sense of achievement and pride in the work. HRD helps in inducing multi skills to the employees. Human Resource Development Manager 
all the HRD activities prove to be useless if there is no effective and efficient HRD manager. He plays a very crucial role in the organization and holds a key position. Given below are the few attributes according to the Parekh and Rao which a HRD manager should possess. As we can see here that under the HRD manager there is a technical, managerial and personal. The technical skills include the various types of the performance and potential appraisal abilities and the systems for developing them, various types of test measurement of the behavior, behavioral science and knowledge of the techniques in the behavioral research. Managerial skills include the leadership qualities, decision skills, organizing abilities etc. And personal skills include the trust, positive attitude, creativity, concerns for excellence etc. Role of HRD manager, first is role analysis. Another is HRP, third is recruitment, selection, fifth is placement, sixth is induction and orientation, another is performance appraisal, training, management development, next career planning and development, next organizational development, employee counseling, teamwork, communication policies, grievance mechanism. These all are the rules of the HRD manager. Now student, let us summarize what we have studied in this module. In a culturally diverse workforce, it becomes essential for an organization to efficiently and effectively use the HRD so that it can achieve its goals. HRD is the art of procuring, developing and maintaining competent workforce. HRD aims at helping to acquire competencies required to perform all functions effectively to make the organization do well. It improves the capability of the people, promotes the team spirit among the employees and thereby helps the organization to achieve its goals. HRD is a proactive function as it prepares the people to face the future challenges and confidence. HRD mechanism which include the performance appraisal, potential appraisal, career planning, training, organization development, rewards and welfare etc. are available to develop the competencies of the workforce and improve the overall organizational climate. It also proves to be very helpful when there is a diverse workforce as it takes care about the various dimensions like cultural differences, language, food habits etc. for the employees from the different culture. There is an increasing realization in the business circles that HRD would help the employees acquire knowledge, skills, capabilities needed to survive and flourish in this competitive world. Therefore, HRD is an inevitable part for the success of any organization. That is all students. Thank you.